Hello class, this is Ms. Augustine. Today we are going to begin talking about atoms, which are the building blocks of matter. So we're going to start with the philosophical concept of an atom and work our way up to scientific theories. So for starters, atoms are the smallest particle of an element that retains the properties of that element. The word atom comes from the Greek word atomos, which means indivisible. They were first mentioned as a philosophical idea by a Greek teacher named Democritus, who lived in the 4th century BC. And he's the first one to suggest the idea that atoms exist and that everything is made up of them. And there's a picture of him, although to me he looks like Santa Claus, but anyway. So the turning point of chemistry came in the late 1700s. And at that point, chemists were able to relate changes that they observed to individual atoms. And there was a discovery at that point of three basic laws that really led to a better understanding of matter and led to theories describing atoms. So at that point in time, in the late 1700s, chemists had determined what the average size of an atom was. And they had determined that the mass was about 10 to the minus 23 grams, and that the diameter was about 10 to the minus 8 centimeters. So the three laws that we talked about, we'll start with one, the law of conservation of mass. And that states that mass cannot be created or destroyed, only transformed. Um, and so they knew that at that point, that no matter what you did, you could always account for all of the mass in a process, whether it was a physical or a chemical process. And I like to show this little picture about um, that illustrates to me conservation of mass. So in 1990, TVs were really big and the guy was really skinny. And then in 2008, the TV was really skinny and the guy was really big. So matter was conserved. The second law was the law of definite proportions. And that states that a chemical compound contains the same elements in exactly the same proportions by mass, regardless of the size of the sample. So what that means is we know that the formula for water is H2O. And it doesn't matter if you have a single drop of water or if you have a million drops of water, there's always going to be two hydrogens to every one oxygen. So again, another example, sodium chloride will always consist of 39.34% sodium to 60.66% chlorine by mass. And again, that they just had figured out that a compound is a compound. And so the masses of the elements in that compound will always be the same. And that's, again, the law of definite proportions. And again, for water, it's always about 11.18% hydrogen to 88.82% oxygen by mass. The third law was the law of multiple proportions. And that is, uh, it states that for two or more compounds, if they're composed of the same two elements, there will always be some ratio of those elements. And it'll always be some small whole number ratio. So for instance, carbon might combine with hydrogen in a one to one ratio sometimes. In others, it might be a two to four ratio or a two to three ratio. But whatever that ratio is, it's always a whole number ratio. So examples, carbon and oxygen, they can combine in one to one and one to two ratios. Hydrogen and oxygen can combine in a two to one and a two to two ratio, but it's always a simple whole number ratio. So that led a uh, scientist at this time to develop an atomic theory. So the scientist was John Dalton. There's his picture. He was an English school teacher and he proposed an explanation for those three laws. And it occurred, his theory was proposed in 1808. So Dalton's atomic theory, it has five basic postulates. Number one, he stated all elements are composed of tiny indivisible particles and he called them atoms. 
Second, he said atoms of the same element are identical. Uh, the atoms of any one element are different from those of another element. He also said that atoms of different elements can combine with one another, and when they combine, they do so in simple whole number ratios to form compounds. So, for instance, water and uh, sucrose, you'll never see, so these are all whole numbers, you'll never see H2.5 to O3 quarters. It's always whole number ratios. He further stated that chemical reactions occur when atoms are separated, joined, or rearranged, and, and this was his most controversial um, postulate here, that atoms of one element are not changed into atoms of another element by chemical means. So this pretty much got him in trouble with all of the other scientists at that time um, because the alchemists that existed at that time were telling people that you could take worthless elements like sulfur and lead and with a little chemical reaction you could turn them into gold. And so they were going to kings at that point and saying, hey, give me money for my research and I can turn a pile of carbon or a pile of lead into gold for you. So when Dalton said this, it was fairly earth shattering at that point because he was saying, no, 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 not by chemistry. You can't change atoms of one element into atoms of another element. And finally, he stated that atoms cannot be subdivided. So here's my little Einstein atom smasher. So the structure of the atom today is still similar to what, um, what Dalton suggested. Most of his theory is still accepted today with a couple, I said one here, but there's actually more than one major um, revision that atoms are indivisible. And that was the most important thing that he got wrong. We know now that atoms consist of three major parts. There are even smaller particles, but the three major parts are electrons, protons, and neutrons. So again, um, Dalton's theory is mostly accepted to this day with a few major revision. So for now, I'm going to sign off and um, in the next chapter here, we will, the next uh, video, we'll delve into the specifics of how the electrons, protons, and neutrons were discovered. So this is Ms. Augustine signing off.